Certain chaos, but there are some kind of fixed, organized things. The same thing about the distance, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars, the things that we take around us. So there must be kind of a plan for this. So that's okay. knowledge. So that's why you believe in the God. So that's why we're talking about the second thing. So all power, all knowing. It has to know to do things. But you, you are assuming this, but it has to be all knowing because what we say all knowing, meaning knowing the consequence of the thing, meaning knows what this creator knows what basically let's use the term the term he, what he does, he knows what other things that happen, and that it has to have consciousness as well, meaning yeah. meaning. Okay, we know things. We know things from the opposite, yeah? Do you want it to be recorded by the way? What about only me to be recorded? Just me. The camera will be only recorded. Uh, yeah, you want to be recorded. Can I see the frame? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we'll yeah. You stand on this side. Oh, I'm going to move on shortly, though. Yeah, that's fine. We'll move no on problem. Shortly, but yeah. Yeah. So that's why when we are talking about the, this universe, we're talking about, for example, all powerful, and it means the possessor of the power. As well, since this universe has so much knowledge, the initiator has to have the knowledge that surrounds all of this universe. Right, understand the point? If this universe, yeah, you, you may not. You know, no, this, this is us because we 
because we do things random, yeah? But if we know things, how things happen, then we know how to help you. For example, people who are specialized in chemistry. <laughs> Meaning, you should will to do things and will not to do things. That's consciousness. Meaning to say, to decide to create something and decide not to do, not to create it, which means has the choice. No, no upper, no, uh, no power above this creator to decide on his behalf what to do, what not to do. Okay. Why? Because otherwise we're going to go back. Oh, there is a higher power, then there is a higher, then a higher power, and then it yeah, goes. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so it's impossible. So it, sh it should have had a starting point. So this starting point, and this is the definition of God. All powerful, all knowing has independent will. That's the definition of God, basically. Okay. Now, having knowing this, since God has created us, what are we doing here in this universe? Now we know, as a human being, as sophisticated creature, as you know. Do you think our existence has a deeper meaning than the existence of other creatures? Versus animals. Versus everything. Around. Versus everything. Do we Around. have a higher purpose than... Yeah, a deeper purpose. Uh, yeah, I mean, we seem to. Which means, which means, it's not just the other creatures, they have, they eat, they drink, they reproduct. Yeah. yeah? And they don't, and actually, if you think about this, creator who has the knowledge who created this all these creatures it is if just only to create creatures that eat drink reproduct animals do better job than us yeah and they don't cause pollution they don't cause destruction they don't cause all of these things but god gave us this ability which we which we, which we accept or let's say we have we are using the term god god created us in a way that we have certain certain decisions since our uh, our mind and our ability is more is more deeper than than the others. That's why our responsibility is greater than the others. I agree with that. So, yeah. so what is our responsibility then? Since we are here, what's our responsibility? What what are we doing here? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd say that certainly it feels like we have a responsibility to each other, right? And to take care of the world, to take care of each other. Yes, that's part. Good. That's part of our responsibility. But there is deeper than that. Okay. Don't you think we should be at least grateful to the Creator that this Creator has created us? The minimum, minimum thing is to be grateful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there should be some gratitude. There. Well, certain people have horrible lives, so maybe they wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, gratitude. Like for example, your parents. You know, you you are grateful to your parents for. You know that they have at least they are your parents at least to some to some sense to be grateful that's all to be to be good to them to treat them in a good way that's all yeah yeah so i think, I think it depends right because some depends. people have terrible parents as well i understand i understand i'm talking about i'm talking about the norm i'm not talking about the up norm. <laughs> but typically yeah you'd expect yeah. to be great so that's yeah. now when it comes to god god has created us and provide for us and everything around us Look at this, like provide for us. And Allah has said in the Quran, for example, there's one chapter in the Quran, a beautiful chapter in the Quran. Look. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think a significant part of our purpose then is to hand ourselves over to the higher power, right? To yeah, Allah. look, who, who created and proportion, meaning not just create things and as will create portion for them, food, for example, created animals, created, for example, the sheep, give the sheep the ability to, to eat, yeah. to adapt, to you know to defend themselves etc and as well it doesn't end up here and everything else god give them the ability to survive yeah and not just that then after that and as well and he has distant and guided meaning you know for example think about it if you are when you create something yeah 
when you create a robot, for example, yeah. like nowadays they created this robot, the cleaners, yes, yeah. the, the cleaning ones. So they created them to do to to do cleaning uh, at home, yeah. Yeah. But they built in some information in them that whenever they're close to the, they need to recharge, they go back to the port and then they recharge themselves. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you know that. Yeah, yeah. So think about this. Where we get this from? It's from the things around us. Look at look at the creatures around us. Not just God has created them. Not God give them the equip equipment to, uh, and the ability to eat the, the substance that they have or the food, uh, the food that they consume. As well, God guided them for the way to get it. You will find some animal, some some uh, you will call it uh, the the goats of the mountains. They will go to certain areas to take salt because that's part of their diet. Because in certain areas, because certain plants doesn't have the sufficient salt in order for them to preserve the the water in their bodies. Look at this. So Think you about. Think it's nature as well. Yeah, yeah. Meaning, how come? How they have this knowledge? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess some people would say, well, that's from evolution. But then, from what you were saying earlier, but when the how the, the evolution, the evolution believes in chaotic thing. How in chaotic thing, this creature will realize this is my food, and I have to go to this area to get the salt. Yeah. Do you understand the point? And actually, the evolution goes with the ease, not with difficult. For example, that for example, they say in terms of the randomness, things is is is, is easier to go with the simplest form rather than to go to more sophisticated form in terms of food consumption, in terms of the energy preservation, and all of these things. But when things become more sophisticated, that means the energy consumption is more. That means the adaptation will be way bigger. Yeah. You understand? So because of this, it's impossible for us to say, based, based on the evolution thing, that things developed in this way. I'm not sure I'd agree with that, because if that more sophisticated creature but well, how it with came a higher energy consumption if it's dominant and has a reproductive advantage over the simpler creatures then that would be a reason that it would my point is you you see here for example it's easier for the simple cell to survive and to stay doesn't need to have more to be more 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 you could say more complex form in order for it to survive it's easier for it to survive when it's a single cell and and uh, with the, with the same environment. So you don't buy into evolution. Then? Uh, I, I'm, I don't buy into evolution. I buy into adaptation. I believe okay. in something called adaptation. There is kind of creatures that they have. They are certain adaptation. Even this adaptation is as well. God guided them to to survive, to know the means of survival. All of these things, these adaptation, these things, these things is not something that they that they will that they will develop and they will learn because even with the adaptation they will uh, for example with the, with the evolution which means they have to be they have to be multiple creatures who did not survive and succeed with this until one of them succeed that's what they this the, that's what they're presenting for example this goat what you call it, the mountain goats so they have to be few goats that they have done winter through this until it succeeds yeah there's random mutations it's impossible again but my point is, even though, even though we as Muslims, we don't have, we don't neglect about adaptation or even evolved cre creatures from the, you know, from the animals. But when it comes to human being, it has its own unique kind of creation. So that this unique creation of, of the human being, that's why we said to you with his, that's why we said God has mentioned to us in the Quran that yeah, God has created Adam, the father of the humanity, was created creation of God, a direct creation of God. God directly created him and as well give, equipped him with knowledge and understanding in order for him not just only to serve on earth and as well to do what God has created him for, the purpose of the life. We are saying the purpose of the life is to be grateful to, to God. And being grateful to God in Islam is very broad meaning. Not, not necessarily only the direct act of worship, me being good to you and nice to you, this part of being grateful to God. Me being good in the environment, this part of being grateful to God. Yeah. Me being positive in the environment around me, me being grateful to my parents, me being good to my neighbors. All of these things, these are acts of grateful to God. And that's what Islam is presenting. Islam is presenting this. Grateful to God is basically to worship this one God. 
alone and not associate with him and the partners. That is, the, that is what Islam is about. Equal treatment to everyone, regardless of their sex, regardless of their belief system? In terms of what? Me, as a person, of course. As a person, I deal with everyone and with respect, with honor. But the, the believers has a higher, you know, uh, love to, from my side to them because for me, those are my brother. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, verily the believers are brothers and sisters. So I believe those Muslims are my own brothers, my own sisters in Islam. You understand? So Allah put for us this unique relationship. But in terms of everyone, as we treat everyone in the same manner. We treat everyone as long if you are good, if you don't show animosity to, to me and you have no hatred towards me. Why? I accept that Allah says in the Quran, He said the return to be of goodness except being good. So if you are treating me in a good way, I have to return back your goodness in a good way. That's how it is. And our Prophet, peace be upon him, he said in an authentic hadith, he said he is not grateful to God, the one who is not grateful to the, to the people. So that's why we have to be grateful to the people who have, who have done something good to us. So that's part of it. Okay. So that was Islam's teaching. Now here, a question is to you. Uh, what's your name, by the way? John. John. I assume you are... Do you have any kind of inside you, any interest in understanding Islam more? Yes, just because obviously I live amongst a lot of uh, Muslims, so I want to better understand their you know, belief system, where they're coming from. Okay, so if I prove to you Islam is from God, yeah, would you accept to be Muslim? I don't think that there's any proof you could give me that would be sufficient for me to... Uh, Are you sure? That's what I believe, yeah. What you believe, okay. So, John, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he was sent 1400 years ago, yeah? Okay. All right. So the Quran, 1445 years old. Yeah. The first revelation came. Yeah, or since that time, until now. 1445 years. Do you think someone during the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, during his time, would he know about certain things, certain knowledge, certain things which is only discovered with the, with the scientific equipment only recently? Do you think, it, is it possible? Is there any possibility? possibility he might have discovered things in a way that we're not currently aware of. Okay. So he might have had access to tools, etc. that we don't. Oh, all right, okay, let's, okay. Uh, the, how he has access to the tools, or other, other people, they don't have the access to it. Plus as well, he himself, he said this is not from me, this is from God. Yeah, okay, but I wouldn't necessarily buy into what he's saying. But I mean, there are things from the past we don't understand, like we don't know how the pyramids were built, right? The, the pyramid, will, at the end of the day, there the pyramids, at the end of the day, pyramids, still there are things which is, there are different hypotheses, different theories, sure. which is these theories indicate that they, there is possibility. I'm talking yeah. about impossible things. To okay, so what, what are we For example, about? okay. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> For example, what do you think the knowledge of someone 1400 years ago about the cosmos, about the space? Uh, I think they would have had some rudimentary understanding of the stars. Like what? Oh, well, I think the constellations have been identified by that point in time. People understood that there was a rotation of those constellations about the Earth. Do you, kind of do you think they would know that these stars are millions of years away from us? I don't know what other cultures outside of Islamic cultures kind of view at that time. There's not part of culture, but by the way. Not definitively, no. I would, some people might have speculated. But... Okay. God has told us in the Quran, because the, the Quran is the eternal challenge, yeah? Meaning the eternal challenge, we say that God has challenged the people to produce similar to the Quran, yeah? So for example, God has told us in the Quran, yeah? Uh, he said, uh, he said, Allah has made an oath by something in the Quran, it means something is important. I will not make an oath by the positions of the stars. And it's a great oath, but you are not yet aware of it. So God is saying, I'm talking about the position of the stars, yeah? yeah. And saying, this is something great oath, but you at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you are not yet aware of it. What's the meaning of this? Now, what we discovered recently, that when you look into the stars, in the night, yeah. you are basically seeing history, yes? When the light departs from the star, 
It takes millions, millions of entries to your eye. So at the moment that you are seeing the star, what happened to the star? Yeah, we don't know. It might have gone. Yeah, definitely has gone. Definitely. Do you know why? Because the universe is expanding. Yes. Yeah. According to what we believe, uh, what well, you know, according to the science, science. universe is expanding, yeah. and as will all change into black hole, yeah, because there is a lifetime for the for the star. Now, think about it. So God has said in the Quran to the Quran, which was revealed to Muhammad peace be upon him. So when you look to the star, you are literally watching and seeing the position of the star at the moment uh, at the moment when the light departed from it. Now the question is to you, John. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? What, so what of that was Muhammad aware of? Yes. Yes. That's what the, the, the position might Yes, the position, yeah. Made by the position of the stars. And bear okay. in mind, as well, God has said in the Quran, we have created the heavens and we are expanding it. Meaning, as well, it affirmed to us in the Quran 1445 years ago that this universe is expanding. The, the heavens above us is expanding. Okay. Now, so that, all that awareness is in here, is it? Yes, do you want to show you? It's okay, I trust you. Yeah. So we have that. Yeah. One second. Yeah. We have that. And you could check. Later if I need to, if I yeah, feel I need to check. Surah al Dhariyat, verse number 47. Yeah? yeah. Al Dhariyat, 47. There you go. Okay. Forty-seven, and and the heavens we have constructed it with a string, and indeed we are the expander. So, so God has said that as well we are the expander of this heavens. Now, is it? Is it? No, 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 no. That doesn't say the universe is expanding. Actually, we have created them with 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 hands. And we are expanding it. It's actually a musi'un means we are expanding it. Because the, the translation here, they say we are the expander or we are, we are expanding it. Meaning this, uni this universe is expanding according to the, uh, the heavens is expanding. Adding to this, for example, is it a coincidence? We have many in the Quran, many examples. By the way, bear in mind, Quran is not science book. Quran has, you could say, facts. Yeah? Things which we take it for granted, that fact. And that we, we took it, I mean, in the past, we took it as it is until the science discovered these new things. For example, God has told us about what's happening, for example, in the deep of the ocean, when there is the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the darkness, for example, the total darkness, the pitch darkness. God has mentioned in the Quran, mentioned about detailed darkness. God has said those who are away from the guidance of God, like deep in, someone who's deep in the bottom of the ocean, above him there is a wave, above the wave there is another wave. Above the sea, there is a cloud. Even if he took his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness upon darkness. So God is saying, the ones who are away from his guidance, when the sunlight comes to the earth, we know that the, the light will be 40% will be reflected back, and only 60% will go through. This 60%, if there, what does the wave does to the, sur the surface of the sea? What does it do to the light? It breaks the light, yeah? So whatever remains from this, everyone appreciated the surface waves that's fine but we discovered as well recently that deep in the ocean there is another waves which is could be the sea current which travels in a different direction which again discovered recently and it travels by waves even they found some seas some oceans they found in terms of uh, condensity or and, and uh, there you'll find ocean you find the sea underneath the sea with its with its uh, temperature and salt etc so they found like the proper sea under the sea and it has waves, it has its own waves, not, not necessarily related to the surface waves of the sea. So God has given a general things. There's a waves, underneath there is another wave, which as will break whatever remains from the light. 
And deep in the ocean, someone will take his hand out of his pocket. In the time people used to assume the eye could see by itself, Quran is saying that if, if this absence of light, when someone taking his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it, to see his hand. So God is describing this. Who taught Muhammad about all of these things? And he was never a devil, he lived in a desert. Scientific insight in the Quran that they can. I believe, I believe the Quran again is not scientific book, it's not science book. Sure. Quran has facts, yeah, which is and these facts discovered by the scientists by the scientists nowadays, and to say it affirms what's in the Quran, including the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother. That the you know that the development, all of these things are vision. Quran again, it gives hints. Why? Because John, who comes after 1445 years, will wa want to understand the Quran. John doesn't know Arabic. He ha will have the translated copy of the Quran, for example. But at least he will have some hints indicating about that this, this book didn't come from Muhammad, peace be upon him, came from the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's all. So that's why we urge you to read and to learn and to study. And then that's this how it is. The life is a journey of learning. That's all. Yeah, well, it's very interesting. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for your time. I you are welcome. You are welcome, my, my friend. Of, uh, yeah, I think in terms of the scientific things and uh, saying that it's definitely true because of that, I'm not 100% bought into that idea yet. Yeah, no problem, so look at it. Your training hey. in relation to there being greater. No, no my, my point is, my point is to you, for us, we are not using the science as, uh, you could say, as factor for us to, to realize the truth. Science, at the end of the day, changes from time to time. Uh, sometimes people will have theories. Nowadays, they have the Big Bang Theory. They will have the evolution theory. Maybe later on, they will have another theory. So they keep things that are not kind of changes. But the Quran, we say, is a source of the truth. Do you understand? It's a source of the truth. It's not a source of theories. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitive That's all. all right, yeah? Thank you. Have a good all right. Day. And you as well. Thank take you, John. Care. All right, take care. Thank you, John. I wish you come back again, John. All right. Okay, inshallah. May Allah guide our brother. Uh, may Allah guide him to Islam. And apparently he's reasonable. He wanted to learn. He wanted to find the truth. And we hope, inshallah, ta'ala, Allah will open his heart. And at the end of the day, some people, they will use, they will to say, I wanted to see facts in front of me. And that sometimes is not necessarily always access to the truth. It's not necessarily always through scientific facts could be you know at the end of the day Allah the Allah 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 says in the Quran Allah God whomever he wishes to work with Allah just make dua inshallah ta'ala that Allah enables him to open his heart to accept the truth. Wa jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.